I'm really not trying to be mean, but these two townhouse lots in Brightchester are some of the worst builds that EA has ever made. And I think they usually get a pass because this Foxbury thing is worse, and so are a lot of the other builds that came out around the same time as the University Pack. But seriously, what is this? This is a big three-story square. It's so bad. There's no visual interest. It's just, it's really, really poorly done. I can see what they were going for. They're trying to copy these builds that are back behind them. There's potential. It's just not executed very well. And so I was thinking that today we could try to build a real townhouse on this lot because this is a kind of cool area and I'm sorry about the rain. <laughs> it's not really helping sell the place, but this is a really cool neighborhood. I love the vibes of this world. I just don't love the vibes of of this house. So I say we bulldoze it and we build something fresh. So I built two three-story townhouses for students using the new for rent rental residential lot type. Wow, that is a mouthful. So let's just dive into the build and I can show you what I made. I do have a couple of disclaimers for you. Obviously I am building this where the Pleasant family lives, but I am not building it for them. Yes, it is their lot, but it's not their lot because I didn't decorate it for them at all. Instead, I was kind of trying to tell a story with this house, so I bulldozed their lot, kicked out those two sims, and then made up some sims in my head that might live here. I am also, and you're probably gonna hate this, building the lot backwards at first because the lighting on this lot is really bad. It's very shadowed from the actual front of the lot. As you can see here, the sun is shining onto the back, which is nice because the back is very sunny and beautiful, but it's not so good for building because when I'm trying to decorate the front, I can't see colors at all because it's all in shadow. I know I complain all the time about lighting on different lots in this game, but I'm so picky about what the build looks like and when the lighting is just really terrible, it's so hard to see what it's gonna be. And so I built it backwards at first just so I could see the colors more true to form. And then we eventually rotate it back around. So this looks like the back, but it is the front. Does that make sense? And I am building this in like the middle section of Brightchester. So if you're familiar at all with the lore of the university pack, basically it's like a college town where there's two universities, two rival universities. It's got three neighborhoods total. The middle is kind of like a central community space. So it has things like the library. There's a couple of townhouse homes like these. There's a starter home and there's a bar. And that's all kind of shared space across both schools. But then there's two other neighborhoods on opposite sides of town that are the two rival school neighborhoods. One of them is Foxbury. It's like a very modern red and yellow color scheme, very like engineering school. And the other one is the University of Brightchester and it's a very old school. It's more about like studying law and history and like the arts and stuff. Their mascot is a green dragon and it hates the red lobster thing of Foxbury. But because this townhouse is in the central part of town, I liked the idea of the people who live here being from the opposite schools. So on the left side, we have that green door and people from Brightchester. And on the right side, we have a yellow door and people from Foxbury. But I kind of took it a step further and instead of being only students. I furnished one of the townhouses as like a professor's house. It's a little bit bigger than the right house, so I made it have three bedrooms. There's like an upstairs primary bedroom for the teacher, and then they have two kids that live on the middle floor. Perhaps they're like a law professor at Brightchester, and unfortunately, their next door neighbors are a bunch of students from Foxbury. So not just the rival school, but also students. <laughs> so I can imagine there's a bit of drama between these two neighbors. And on that right house, you'll see I decorate it for a bunch of students to live in. It's got two bedrooms, but I put two beds in each. So in total, four Sims live next door in the yellow house. And like I was saying, I built this as a rental residential, residential rental, whatever the lot is called from the rent pack. So it's not technically student housing because that is a whole separate lot type. If you have university, there is a student housing lot type, but that's very specific. On that lot type, you can't have things like stoves anywhere. You have the weird roommate feature where it randomly assigns you roommates. And that's fun at times, but I was thinking of this one being a bit more like maybe upperclassmen that are living with their friends off campus. So it's a rental lot instead of university housing and it has a stove. If you're not familiar with how the pack works, you're probably like, what are you even talking about? But I swear it makes sense if you played university. And as far as other pack content goes, I did try to slightly limit packs with this one. As always, it never really goes according to plan. <laughs> so you can see that I'm using a lot of Strangerville specifically because of the door. 
doors. We have a lot of Stranger Roll windows too, and mostly university windows because it is a university building. And then on the interior, I kind of went wild with packs, with the exception of me trying really hard to not use any kits. I went through the whole first house without using a single kit anywhere, and then I came back on a different day to finish the second house because it took me so long to build this, and I kind of forgot about that plan, and I started using kits in one of the bedrooms, and then I was like, wait, no! <laughs> I said I wouldn't! So I took out all of the kit things except pastel pop. So there's no kits except the pastel pop kit. And actually, I stand behind that choice because objectively it is one of the best kits. So I, I just had to do it. I wanted to use the cute stuff in the dorm room, and I feel like it was worth it. I always get real mixed signals from people about whether or not limited pack builds are what they want, because I'll do a poll on my Twitch stream where I'm like, hey chat, should we do limited packs or unlimited packs? And then usually the poll will be like 80% unlimited packs, but then I also feel bad using packs everywhere, so I'm constantly trying to balance it. But I've done a handful of limited pack builds on YouTube the past couple weeks, so hopefully that helps. And I should probably get back to my rebuilding new crest plans. I've kind of fallen off from that, but I did swear I was gonna finish doing that, didn't I? I'll add it to the list, okay? <laughs> but anyway, back to the build for a second. We have finally flipped it back around. So the front is the front again, and the back is the back. So it's all kind of back to normal. And we've kind of figured out the main layout of these buildings. As you can see, they're very tall and skinny, and they're kind of just a whole wall of windows across the front. And I I think that some people are really put off by that. I got a lot of comments in my Twitch chat that were like, oh my god, why are there so many windows? Maybe you could try less. But I think that you just maybe don't understand the vibes, <laughs> if you think that. If you look around in the background at the fake houses that are nearby, you'll see a bunch of buildings like this. Basically same thing. Tall, skinny, full fronts covered in windows. That's just how people build houses like this in, in busy cities and stuff. I lived in a townhouse in real life for a long time, and in a space like this, you Usually there'd be more than just two put next to each other, but in a space like this, if you've got a row of houses all attached, they can't have windows on the sides, so they really try and maximize window real estate in the front, which is why you see full walls of windows, because you want to have as many as possible. I think it looks pretty cool and elegant and fancy and also realistic, but I understand if it's kind of weird. In, in general, a big, tall, skinny building covered in windows is kind of weird, but it's realistic. I kind of want to build a second set of townhouses to put on the lot next door, because there's two of them, and they had this weird like single house on each thing going on, but I kind of like the idea of making a second set of similar buildings, but slightly detached to put on the other lot. They're kind of like twin townhouses, but not exactly perfectly matching, you know? So you can see me right now trying to think about landscaping and the very small front yards that these two houses have. I guess that's the one major downside of these buildings, is they have a very, very small amount of outdoor space. They each have a tiny courtyard in both the front and the back, and I try tried to fence them in to make them a little bit more private, and that's kind of where I encountered some issues, I guess you could say. If you look on one side of each of the stairs, you'll see a weird half wall thing. That's because you can't put the fence up against the staircase like that. It doesn't let you because it would try and jump up to the height of the stairs. And I tried a few different things, like getting rid of the foundation and just having the stairs be floating, and no matter how I did it, there was some sort of weird part of the fence up against the stairs. So that was kind of like the bane of my existence with this build was just that area around the front porch with the stairs. I did manage to find a method that I kind of liked a little bit better later on, but I had to get rid of the stair railing to make it work, and that was annoying too, so I just- I felt like I couldn't win. <laughs> no matter what I did, there wasn't a best option, but I think it worked out okay enough in the end because the fence didn't look weird. And if you don't have a railing, well then, I'm sorry, good luck, I guess. <laughs> we can pretend there's a railing attached to the fence wall. You can't see it, but just like, pretend it's there, okay? So while I work a little bit more on the exterior landscaping of these, I actually have a kind of exciting announcement for you. And it is townhouse related, I swear, I've got a really fun idea. So next weekend on Saturday, March 30th, we're doing a huge charity stream over on my Twitch channel. We're gonna be fundraising for the National Center for Transgender Equality. They're working to both help bring awareness and also to change policy in the US government regarding trans people. You're probably aware of this, but there's a lot of really scary things happening and a lot of scary legislation being passed in the US regarding trans folks, so that's why I wanted to do this fundraiser. I do a lot of charity streaming over on my Twitch channel, and I'll link my stream down below if you want to follow me and turn on notifications now so you don't miss that. This is something that's really important to me, especially given that I live in Florida, which is one of these major culprit states. Florida is the bad place, as many of us know, and on that stream on the 30th during the fundraiser, I had the idea to build a set of townhouses in the trans pride flag colors, which I think is actually going to be really cute, so if you want to come by to that stream, mark your calendars. You absolutely do not 
not have to donate. I really don't want anybody to ever feel bad about not being able to donate, but just coming by and helping to hang out with us and help to spread awareness about this goes a long way. It's really important to talk about these things and also help give people access to the tools they need to like call their senators and help make active change. So I'm sorry about the quick detour from the build. I just wanted to quickly announce that for you. I'll probably be talking about it a bunch this week leading up to the event, so just keep that in mind. But back to this current set of townhouses for a second. We're working on the floor plan right now. I know this part of the build is always very confusing because when I'm trying to do floor plans, there's just a lot happening, a lot of camera spinning, especially when there's two townhouses because it's like, which one is which? Where are we? I kind of get lost watching the speed build back. So let me walk you through this for a sec. We are currently in the university professor's Brightchester townhouse. It's the left one with the green door. And what I'm doing right now is putting in filler furniture. I don't want you to panic. <laughs> I'm not planning on using a scary polka dot rug. I just like to put in some random furniture for a second so I can kind of visualize where stuff is gonna go. Especially in big open floor plans like this, it's really hard to know which is which and where stuff is gonna be. So I'll put just some random furniture down for a second so I can picture it a little bit better. And then on the right side on the other townhouse, this one's a little bit smaller because the upstairs is a bit smaller. So I wasn't able to fit as many bedrooms in this one. This is the one that belongs to the students. And so we have a big downstairs open space and then two bedrooms total. There's one bedroom and one bathroom on each floor. They're also quite weirdly shaped bedrooms as well. They have some weird little nooks and crannies to them, which I think is kind of fun because in this case, it gives us some space to hide the beds. I wanted to make two dedicated spaces for each of the Sims that live in each of those rooms. And then of course I put filler furniture downstairs of this one too, and it just looks really chaotic. <laughs> I think that watching the furnishing of townhouses is really confusing because there's so much going on. So I tried hard to make the two of them very distinct and have very different color schemes and stuff. For sure, I think that the yellow townhouse was the harder of the floor plans to figure out just because it was smaller and the rooms are quite weird shapes. It was a little bit harder for me to think about where to put everything. And the downstairs was a bit harder too because the downstairs is actually bigger, but it's just laid out differently. I don't know. I struggle with this one. I hate looking at this build when it has the filler furniture in it. This is always like a nerve wracking time for me when I'm doing these builds on my Twitch streams. I know that sounds so silly, but like keep in mind, it takes me a while to lay out this filler furniture before I delete it. And that's when people are like coming into the stream for the first time. Imagine they think that my build actually looks like that. They're gonna show up and then be like, oh, nice to meet you. Oh, you built that? Wow. <laughs> It's not as bad in the speed build because it goes by so quick, but real time, it's embarrassing. I did actually build this live on my Twitch channel in case that wasn't obvious. Most of my speed builds, I build first over on Twitch because builds like this one took me like six hours to finish. And it was more like five hours for this one, but it was a couple of streams, a couple different days in real life. And so if you like the idea of coming by to that sort of thing, we spend a while working on them together. And it's fun because we can kind of hang out and chat. We can like bounce ideas off each other. During this one, we talked a lot about that new potential Sims movie. <laughs> which I actually made a video about yesterday, if you haven't heard about that. I don't know if it's real, but we, we threw out some ideas about that in a video too, because I was so curious about it. I actually had a meeting about a different charity event like an hour ago, <laughs> and one of the first things they said to me was, did you hear about that Sims movie? <laughs> I can just imagine for the next like however many years it takes for this to come out nonstop, everybody's gonna be like, hey, heard about the Sims movie? Did you hear about the Sims movie? <laughs> because of course they're gonna bring it up to me. I'm like the Sims girl. Quick TLDR if you haven't heard about this. Apparently, Margot Robbie apparently is set to produce a movie about the Sims, which is really interesting because obviously Margot Robbie is Barbie and Barbie movie and Sims movie honestly have a lot in common, I think. I don't really know if it's true. They've talked about like, oh, so-and-so is gonna direct, this person's gonna write it with the director. So it's not really being made yet. It's just like kind of beginning to be in the work. So we don't have a lot of real news about it. It's not even written, like I said, so so don't get your hopes up too high. It might not actually come true, but it is kind of an interesting thought. So I hope, actually, I hope that it does come true, but we'll see. We'll see what comes from it. Every single time someone brings it up to me, they're like, you should be in it, Kayla. <laughs> Every time the person in the meeting earlier was like, they should put you in as a cameo. Every time someone mentions it. I actually am not opposed to that. I would do it if they asked me. I just don't think that they would ask me. Like, I don't think that they, they care about that, but I don't know. <laughs> I've been like visualizing it for the past couple of days because it's been brought up so much and it kind of makes me really anxious, the thought of doing that. But I feel like it's an opportunity that could not be passed up if it arose. Again, it's not actually happening, so don't get your hopes up. But could you imagine me like flying to California to go to a movie set? Oh my God. <laughs> I would have stories about that. Imagine the first speed build back when I'm allowed to talk about it. I would be going on and on and on about this movie. 
Oh my goodness, it would be cool. I just don't see a world where they actually like care about, I don't, I don't know. I just don't see them actually doing that, you know? They did put MatPat in the Five Nights at Freddy's movie. So um, I don't know, <laughs> I don't know. I just don't, I don't think that it's gonna be possible. I figured I should probably mention it here too though because everybody's been talking about it. Maybe if we manifest it together enough, it'll come true. But anyway, <laughs> I have more so furnished the full downstairs of this university professor's house. This one is a little bit more formal and like old school. It also has that really nice light minty color everywhere as an accent. I use the vampire's kitchen counters in here. We've got obviously the Strangerville front door. And then I have these really pretty curtains from university, which miraculously match the front door perfectly. I also use a lot of the paranormal stuff pack in here, believe it or not, because there's a really cool gallery wall from paranormal that I wanted to put in. I feel like it's very fresh and bright in this house. Does that make sense when I say it? I don't know. I just liked the vibes of this one. It's really funny how different, you'll see, but how different these two townhouses are on the first floor, because obviously color scheme is like complete opposite. This one's green, other one is red, but this one belongs to like probably a pretty wealthy professor at the school, and the other one belongs to a bunch of students that are sharing it. So I was kind of picturing the other one to be like furnished by the school or like pre-furnished by the landlord. So it kind of had some weird furniture in there. So anyway, in this house, the fancy house, downstairs, kind of simple open floor plan layout. We put some simple clutter, but nothing too busy. The upstairs is where it gets a little bit more interesting because once we get upstairs, we'll have two bedrooms to furnish on the second floor and then a third bedroom on the third floor because these houses are honestly quite big. They're very small footprint, but they're tall. So there's a lot of stuff going on inside of them. I tried to decorate the first kid's bedroom in kind of like a sporty vibe. Parenthood has this sporty wallpaper. Literally, it's just like got a stripe of different balls on it. So I put that in this one with a lot of like blue, bright blue color scheme everywhere. I had a fun time trying to go through and pick out different curtains and beds and stuff that would match better. I gotta say, I think kids rooms are some of the more fun things to decorate out of everything in The Sims for me. I just love putting in all the kids stuff. I think it's because I feel a little bit more comfortable doing silly things. And that's dumb because I could put silly stuff anywhere. Oh my goodness. The sports are gone. Now it's dinosaur themed. <laughs> I forgot. <laughs> Oh no. Okay. Um, actually, sorry, scratch that. The room is dinosaur themed and it's got like a blue wave across the whole wall. And I said that the first time. You never heard me say anything different. I don't know what you're talking about. Anyway, we have a dinosaur rug. <laughs> I'm remembering now. The kid likes dinosaurs. The other kid likes space was the vibes that I was picking. Wow. I just get done saying how much I love decorating kids rooms and yet I cannot even remember what I did in this one. Anyway, these rooms were actually kind of hard because the windows are weird. They're very big windows and they're kind of low to the ground because it looks better from the outside like that. And so I had a really hard time with the curtains. I had to do some kind of sneaky things like use the base game curtains and then put a little fake curtain rod across the top of it. So I tried to make it look like it made sense, but I've not really done curtains that well in rooms like this before. So it was kind of a new experiment. The curtain rod that I use is actually from the rent pack because normally I would use the Desert Lux kit one, but I was trying to not use kits in this house. And so I forgot that the rent pack has has one. The rent pack one is just a little bit fancier. It has like some, some detailing, some wood carvings in it, but this is meant to be an old house. So I don't think it's that odd to have a fancy wood carved curtain rod. You'll see I used a lot of growing together in these kids rooms too. Like the space themed room has the growing together bed. I really like that growing together bed. It has a single bed version and a bunk bed version. And weirdly it matches one of the rugs in the base game perfectly because they added that base game rug at the same time as we got growing together. It's always kind of strange though when there's like two things from two different sources that have the same patterns on them. And it's almost a little bit too samey that the base game rug has the exact same patterns as this bed. If I wanted to, I could have used that bedspread as the rug too, but I think that would have been too much. I tried to fit in some extra colors instead. This room is also an extremely weird shape. So I have this like weird nook where I tried to put a desk in the corner. And I think that makes sense. I also put a couple of little bits of Brightchester decor, because I kind of liked the idea of this kid being a huge Brightchester fan. A lot of times that happens where kids become like big fans of their parents, like alma maters and stuff. And because this kid's parent works at Brightchester, I bet they're a huge fan of the school and they probably dream of going there when they get older. So I put like a little banner up on the wall above their bed and stuff. I also put some more musical things in here. I gave them the little keyboard from City Living. I always kind of forget that item exists, which I feel sort of silly about, because it's nice to have, especially because all the 
other pianos are so big. Obviously we have grand pianos, and then recently we just got our first ever stand-up pianos, but this one makes a little bit more sense to put in like a kid's room, for example. They're not gonna have some fancy multiple thousand dollar piano in their little kid's room. I guess some kids might but not any people I know. So <laughs> they have a regular keyboard, a normal average person type of keyboard. You may have also just seen, I put this wild galaxy light in there. There's like a galaxy light show. It's base game. People always ask me, what is that thing? Where did you get that? But it's like a, a projection of space, I guess, that comes up out of a little ball. And the item is in the base game. It's actually a career reward from the astronaut career, which makes sense given it is a space-themed light. But I left that there on the nightstand of this little kid's room. It's kind of weird because in when you're in build mode, it just looks like a little ball, like a little metal thing. So when you see it, you're like, oh, what is that? I don't really care about that. But actually it's kind of fun. There is one from the deluxe version of the game too that's a bit bigger and it has like dancing freezer bunnies in it. It's like a deluxe laser light I forget what the exact name of it is, but it's kind of a weird item. I only knew it existed because I've been given it by Santa before on Winterfest in game. So I got like handed this thing and I was like, what is that? And then I looked and it's kind of interesting. We are now finally on the top floor though. And this is where the primary bedroom is. So we've got like a kind of small little hallway up here that I turned into a slight office for the teacher. I put obviously a computer and a desk up here, but I also put a bunch of fish things. I don't know what came over me, but I suddenly decided, you know what? These Sims like fish. <laughs> So I put the little fishing lure tackle box thing from growing together on the wall above the desk And I also have a fish tank in there because I wanted to find a place to put the fish tank somewhere because I always forget about that item It's from cats and dogs and it's so big that it's hard to use It's also kind of silly because there's no actual gameplay involved. They're just in there floating They look like little VFX basically. There's no like feeding of the fish or anything They're just there But I put that in the hallway and then last we have the primary bedroom and their ensuite bathroom So in total this house the left side is three bedrooms and two bathrooms plus a stair landing office, but that does not really count as an office. It's just a hallway basically, <laughs> but in a small space, you make do with what you have. And now we are immediately jumping over to the right side instead. And confusingly, I'm furnishing the bedrooms first in the student house because I was so excited about the bedrooms that I wanted to start there. So we're starting in the middle floor of the student house on the right side. I know, so confusing. But the idea of this one, we were kind of joking about Barbie because of the new Sims movie things. We were thinking, okay, Barbie on one side and then someone who's got a completely opposite vibe on the other side I wanted to really make the most out of this space So I tried to use dividers and they have very small separate sections in here. They're also complete opposite vibes So there's one kind of like celestial Black and purple vibe on the left and then we have the pink one on the right Each sim has a desk a dresser a bed and a nightstand. I managed to fit it in Miraculously it was a really tight squeeze, but we made it work and I did play test this as well so your sims can get around each of these rooms just fine, but they are both tight like this because the upstairs room is also this small. And this is where I kind of fell off and started using kits. <laughs> I forgot about it because I came back in. Now we're on day two of the build and I forgot that I had said no kits and then I started using the kits and then it was a big mistake. And so I ended up keeping the chair specifically because I liked the little heart chair from the pastel pop kit so much as the little desk chair that I couldn't bring myself to get rid of it. You will see a lot of other packs in here, primarily high school school years, if I'm being honest. We've got like high school years tapestries and lights. We've got high school years rugs. I mean, I put high school years everywhere. It is really good for decorating spaces like this though, because the kinds of clutter and decor bits really work well for this. This is a really niche reference, okay? But my Twitch chat kept making jokes about how this room was like me and my friend Momo. <laughs> There's a streamer called Momo Misfortune, who is a very dear friend of mine, who is a self-proclaimed goth. And everybody kept joking like, oh, ha ha, Kayla on the left side with the pink. And I'm not helping the allegation with this shirt that I'm wearing, but <laughs> everybody was laughing about that. So if you know Momo, well, there you go. A couple of the standout items in this room though, for me, I think are the rugs. So you can see, I only have one place right now, but I use the same one twice in different swatches. It's actually a rug from high school years. I sized it up once. It's supposed to be kind of like bath mat sized normally, but sized up, it gets kind of long and skinny. There's this really cute cloudy rainbow pastel vibe on one half. And then the other half has that cool moon and stars swatch. High school years seriously has so many 
good things and I kind of forget about that rug because you have to size it up for it to be really useful but it worked out perfectly in here. I also put the ace pride flag over on one side because it kind of matched the room really well so I wanted to use that. We have a lot of like little record stuff. We've got like signs and banners. We've got Polaroid pictures and posters and just stuff everywhere on the walls. I really went all out. I was kind of trying to channel what you would find in a dorm room in the movies. I think in real life most people would never decorate their dorm rooms this much. You would also not have like custom colored furniture. <laughs> in real life it's probably all just the same color icky wood veneer stuff, but in this case it's the sims. We have magic powers. We can make everything perfect. <laughs> and so it really helps with like the division between the two halves having this like different colored furniture in here. I also found a couple of LED lights. Lights. I was kind of going for a lot of lights in here. I put like pretty fairy lights all over the place But I found these cute LED lights from high school years that I also kind of forget about because they're in the like Painting section of the game not the light section It's just like a strip light sort of thing formed into a shape, but they have a couple really fun swatches There's like signs and lightning bolts and stars and hearts and stuff And I felt like that was really good for a space like this too because people love LED lights Especially like college students. They've got those everywhere with like the strip lights around their room I know I have no room to talk. I literally have that behind me. <laughs> it's like college students and gamers love the LED stuff, which speaking of which, moving upstairs, <laughs> you'll see on the third floor, we have kind of like a gamer space. I know it's kind of cringe and cliche, but I decorated the third floor to be a jock and a gamer. We were thinking like sports, and eSports <laughs> for the upstairs bedroom. And so I kind of tried to have one of them be very Foxbury themed. They've got like all the Foxbury merch, Foxbury bedspread, Foxbury posters, Foxbury banners, just everything. They are a big fan of the school. They must be on one of the sports teams or something. And then the other Sim is just a big fan of games. So they have like the fake Minecraft poster and stuff like that. Their divider is a little bit smaller. So their room made better use of the space because the divider took up less of it. But this floor plan is pretty much the exact same is the downstairs, just kind of in reverse. Each of these floors has their own bathroom. So in total, this right side house has two bedrooms and two bathrooms. Each floor has two beds and one bathroom in it. So four Sims can live here. And if you were going to actually play in this house, remember it's a residential rental, not university accommodations. So what you would probably do is make like four Sims who all live here and go to school together. The idea of playing four different college students at once is like deeply distressing to me because I find playing one college student at once to be hard. It's actually difficult to play university. Doing four would be so much work. That's like a challenge. Eight Sim university challenge or something. <laughs> Can you have eight Sims graduate with good grades in college? I'm gonna write that down. You've heard of the seven toddler challenge. You've heard of the seven infant challenge. Get ready for the eight college challenge. <laughs> it actually takes a long time to graduate from school too, but it's hard to keep up with homework. It's a lot harder, I think, to do university in The Sims 4 than it was in The Sims 3. There's just more going on, but I think that's a good thing because generally speaking, The Sims 4 is probably the easier of all of The Sims games. I think they really made The Sims easier in general. They used to have a lot more chaotic things that happened. The game used to be harder to play, but they got a lot of backlash from people. Just to give an example, when Seasons first came out, it used to really affect your bills to have the heat or the AC on, but people got really mad about it being difficult to pay the bills, and so they kind of tuned it so that now AC doesn't really affect your bills at all, like you don't really have to worry about the weather when it comes to your bill cycle. And a lot of you may not even remember that happening, but generally speaking, The Sims kind of was forced to cut back on like the random events and the difficulty, and I understand that, like not everybody likes that kind of thing. I am one to really enjoy when like like Sims randomly die and randomly have fires and randomly get proposed to. I kind of like the randomness of the game, but some people really want to have full control. So they're kind of trying to balance those two things to appeal to both sets of players. But I think it's definitely leaning towards the more control group, which not everybody loves. I think that's the main reason that people complain about The Sims 4. And I mean people that are coming from previous Sims games. Obviously the game being broken is a different issue, but like just in general, The Sims 4, one of the big issues that it has is because it's so cookie cutter, I guess now. It's not as chaotic as it used to be. I'd be curious to know what you all think about that. Like, would you prefer the chaos or, or do you like having control and not having bad things happen to your Sims? I think there could be a better happy medium. I think there could be like settings for randomness so that people that don't want it could avoid it, but people like me could embrace it. And they've been trying a little bit, a little bit with it. I mean, things like the neighborhood stories stuff from last year was kind of helpful, but they need more. <laughs>
<laughs> I think they really need more still. We have officially finished the upstairs though, so we are moving back down into the main living space of this weird Foxbury townhouse. And this one you'll see has kind of a wacky color scheme. It's got yellow kitchen cabinets and a lot of red accents in here. I really made myself be very brave and I put red couches. You know I hate the color red. I never ever ever use it in my builds, but this is like the Foxbury townhouse. So I wanted to try. I have this sort of mindset where like, when else are you gonna get a chance to use the red plastic couches? You know, college student house is the perfect opportunity for red plastic couches. <laughs> it reminds me, and this is probably gonna hit real close to home for a lot of British people. So my husband, Dan, went to the University of Portsmouth. If you didn't know, he's British. We were long distance for a long time, and then he moved to the US after a very long visa process. It's been like a whole thing. But when we were dating, we were long distance, and I would fly to the UK to visit him and stay at his student housing in Portsmouth. And you can picture it like really small townhouse, row house, sorry, two stories, like this wide, so skinny, and it had this couch in the living room. The living room basically had nothing in it. Like it was so small you can't, there was like a staircase and a couch <laughs> and that was it. But the couch was this really honestly vile black plastic sofa. And it reminds me of these red ones, like the red love seat in particular in this living room. That's what it looked like, but it was black and like kind of crustier. Does that make sense? Cause it just comes with the house. So like everybody's had it for God knows how long. But anyway, I told that story on stream and the whole chat was like, oh my God, I'm watching this stream from a couch just like that in my student house. So that kind of made me laugh. I'm, I'm sure that there are some of you out there who can really relate to that. You might even be in Portsmouth at this very moment. Moment. But I was I was channeling that this is a lot nicer than that house was. <laughs> they did not have a rug, that's for sure. Nor did they have a huge open living space, fancy kitchen, island, flat screen TV. No, no, none of that, none of that. It was a cute house, but it wasn't like this house. I'm always trying to balance that line between realism in my Sims builds and also like fun sim stuff. Because if you made an actual realistic student accommodation, let's be honest, it wouldn't be fun to build. <laughs> and it would be quick because you'd put like nothing in it. So I was trying to channel little bits of realism, but mostly it's kind of fancy in here and very expensive as well. A couple of the highlights of the downstairs were some of the Brightchester, anti-Brightchester things I put on the wall. There's like a Foxbury poster and then a Brightchester poster that's like crossed out above the couch. I like fueling this rivalry. I can feel the storyline coming together where these kids have parties and the professor next door gets so mad. I'm serious. I think it might be my worst case scenario if I was a professor to live next door to the rival school students. Cause you know, these kids take it way too seriously. They vandalized the poster. Like they probably vandalized the neighbor's house. So I feel bad for them. But with that, the build is just about done. So just as a reminder, we had this empty lot in Brightchester. On the gallery, it's called Brightchester townhouses. And I'm sorry, it's so weird. The picture is is like shady and gross because <laughs> the lighting is bad. It costs 148,000 simoleons and it is a residential rental. So you have to make your lot type the right kind of lot first before you can place it. And I don't have enough money, okay. Let me turn on move objects too, just to be safe. So this is what the finished building looks like. There's a couple things on the outside that I wanted to show you. So in the front porch of the professor's house, I gave them like a little tiny chess table kind of hidden in this little courtyard nook. The students have a kind of cute games table so they could play puzzles and cards there. This is what I meant by not being able to put a railing on the stairs. Cause look what it does. It like replaces that and I hated it. So I didn't put a railing there. They do have two mailboxes shared right here in the corner. And I also put in some really nice trash cans on the side. I tried to make the landscaping look nice by using these little tiny pieces. These are like support beams from Cottage Living. And I sort of surrounded the planters with them. And I think that helps because it can be up against the edge of the lot that way. If you come way around the back of the house, we do have a couple cute things going on back here and the lighting is way better. So you can see what it looks like a bit more. The professor has a woodworking table. They have a grill and a nice table outside. They do also have a telescope if you wanted to use it. It. On the left side, we've got a little bar covered in fairy lights. I did put some hamburgers there for you. <laughs> I was play testing it and so I had them and I was like, I'll just leave them out. So if you get it off the gallery, you will get some hamburgers with your purchase. There's a keg, there's a grill, but it's not really that much space. There's not too much going on back there. I'm gonna start by showing you the professor's house. So when you first come in, you walk in 
through this front door. They've got a small little entryway that goes upstairs. I love this gallery wall. In the living room, we've got a nice little setup of two chairs and a couch facing this nice TV. And I kind of built my own custom table by putting these cabinets on the wall and covering a little table with it. So it looks like it has legs, but it's a bit wider. These are the vampire's counters that I was talking about. I just love them for this. I love the color scheme here. And they have a small dining table too. There is homework there, but I decided to leave it because I felt like maybe they're grading it or something. Actually, my Sims just started doing it when I was playtesting, but I kept it for you. Um, upstairs, very, very tight hallway. There is a thermostat and a bathroom up here. I love this tile from the rent pack. And of course we have that dinosaur, not sport, but dinosaur room right here for one of the kids. The other kid has a fancy space and music room right here. And then when you go all the way up the stairs, I love how the staircase and the landings look, but all the way up, oh, <gasps> the light is floating. Oh my God, ignore that. You didn't see that, okay? Don't don't look at that part, ignore that. <laughs> um, up here, we have the little fish tank and the office space for the Professor Sim. They have their bedroom right here. It's got some nice furniture and a fireplace and like a couple shelves. They also have an ensuite bathroom, but that's the whole left house. When you come way back downstairs into the right house, this is the yellow and red one for the students. They have a little tiny entryway. I tried to put some useful things like a whiteboard for them to like do chore charts on. Uh, when you come in, they've got a really nice kitchen for a couple of students. They have some storage up here. I did put in things like the little cube bookshelves like I have. Uh, I organized this room in kind of a weird way. I wanted to flip the couches around on purpose. I feel like it probably would have made more sense facing this wall, but I did it this way because it was weird. And they have a nice big TV and some more bookshelves, very small dining table, but also some bar stools. And then upstairs, there is a little hallway, very simply decorated. One of the shared bathrooms is right here. Here. And then the first bedroom is that like all black and all pink one. I love how different the two sides are in here and they both have fully functional spaces. This sim has a lot less space than this one does. So I'm sorry to this one, but it looks cute this way. So it's fine. <laughs> Couple of highlights I think are the things on this wall. I just love how this angle looks. It's a really weird shape, but in a cool way. Um, and then upstairs, it's basically the same thing, just flipped around. They also have a bathroom up here, very simple, small hallway. And then this set of bedrooms. I love the gamer vibe with the weird wallpapers and rugs. I don't know if I've ever used this computer either. This is like a trunk computer. It's a mayhem portable computer from the criminal career, but I don't know. It was interesting to me. <laughs> and they have like an esports trophy because they won a tournament. And then on this side, this is like the sporty athlete's room. Again, it does work. I play tested this little chair and stuff, so they can get in here just fine. And they have a lot of red. I don't really love this. You know, I hate red, but I did what I could. And that's the fully finished build. So we have finally made it through. <laughs> Thank you for watching this video. Like I said, it's on the gallery if you want to download it. And if you want to watch me do the full thing, not sped up, I do post all of my live streams onto my second channel, More Simsy, after I'm done live streaming them. So I can link that down below for you too, because you can see the full thing in real time speed. And I'm gonna go, so I will catch you all tomorrow. Okay, bye everybody. Oh my gosh, if you only knew the roller coaster I have been on while recording this video, I had like a tax email in the middle of this. I left to do my laundry in the middle of this. <laughs> I've been doing a lot during this recording.